prepare you for the Bible studies of the coming year. Next year, you'll be a faithful learner of the Word of God in Jesus' name. We're going to stand up and we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed moment together. Thank you for the joy of studying your word. And thank you for the life you give us as we study your word. Thank you for the privilege today and for your faithful children, brothers and sisters. In the youth section, in the children's section, in the adult section. Lord, we pray you give us understanding in the study and the learning of your word tonight in Jesus' name. Help us to develop an interest in studying your word, a passion for studying your word, a desire for wanting to know what is the wisdom of Christ and the mind of God and what he has preserved for us in the revelation of the word. Lord, we pray tonight you help us to understand. Give us the key of understanding and the understanding of your word will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me a good, good amen. Thank you very much. You can sit down. Matthew chapter 5. We come to Matthew chapter 5. Jesus Christ is Savior. Jesus Christ is our Messiah. Jesus Christ is our Shepherd. But Jesus Christ is also our teacher. You need to understand from the Bible that Jesus Christ was recognized as a teacher in John chapter 3. John chapter 3. I'm reading to you from verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, that means Master, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. We know thou art a teacher come from God because no man can affirm and confirm and demonstrate the truth of what he teaches like you do with miracles. We know therefore you are a teacher come from God. And the teaching of Jesus Christ influence not just the head or the brain or the mind or the emotion of the people the teaching of the lord jesus christ stirred them up in their hearts luke chapter 23 in luke chapter 23 verse 5 and they were the more fierce saying he stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. Whenever Jesus touched the people, he stirred up their heart. He aroused their mind that they will want to serve the Lord by the teaching that he gave them and his method of teaching was different from the teaching of the scribes and Pharisees. Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 28 and verse 29. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them 
as one having authority and not as the scribes. You will see then that Jesus was a master teacher. He was a teacher like no other teacher. And it's the teaching of Christ we're looking at tonight. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Actually, Jesus had been teaching what is called the Beatitudes. Because he said in verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, the lowly in spirit. Woe unto the proud in spirit, for blessed are the poor in spirit, the humble in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they that mourn. The people that mourn where there is sin. That like Jeremiah, my eyes drop down of the tears because he do not obey your word. Like the psalmist, my weeping for my tears they wet my bed every night because of the people that do not obey your word blessed are they that mourn warn to them that laugh at iniquity but blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are the meek the gentle the meek the tender, the compassionate, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst at righteousness, for they shall be filled when we're thirsty at righteousness. And our passion, our hunger, our desire, is for righteousness. It says, such people will be filled. And blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. The peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Now, every time you read that, you understand the opposite is also true. Woe unto the peace takers, the troubleshooters, and the troublemakers, because they will not get to the kingdom of God. For blessed are the peacemakers, because they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward. In heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And it's in the conclusion of these beatitudes that he began to tell the believers. The believers are the people to carry out and to live the beatitudes out in their lives. And he said, Ye are the salt of the earth, sweeten your community. Contribute something sweet to your community. Ye are the salt of the earth, not the sugar. Only sweet, but cannot heal the wounds. But you know, salt is sweet, but it will also heal the wounds. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt had lost its savor, 
a sweetness, a saltiness, where we eat shall it be salted. It is meant for good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. It's your salvation that makes you the salt of the earth. It's your righteousness that makes you the salt of the earth. It's the godliness in your life that makes you the salt of the earth. When you lose that salvation, when you lose that righteousness, when you lose that godliness, you, the salt has lost its savor and it will not be cast out to be trodden under the foot of men. And then it says, Here the light of the world, a city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Now that he said you are the light of the world, he now says, let your light shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, not your bad works. Believers should not have any bad work, any bad day, any bad time, any bad influence. The believers are supposed to have good works. Let your light so shine before men. This word, the little word, S-O, S-O. I don't mean state of us here, I mean the word so. So, it says, let your light so shine. So shine. What does that mean? It means that you should allow your light to shine to a very high degree, to a great extent, to an extraordinary level, having a higher quality of brightness. Let me look at that word, the word so. Look at this. Let your light so shine. Look at that word. Follow me through the Bible for that word so. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 24. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? Have you seen the people running the race? You know, some people are running moderately. Some people are running slowly. Some people are running gently. But some people run very hard and very fast. That's why it says in number 24, it says, So run. So run, in verse 24, that she may obtain, that is, go beyond the moderate, go beyond the slow ones, and so run, let your light so shine. Verse 26, I therefore so run, he said, I want to win the crown. I want to get the reward, so I'm not running slowly or gradually or moderately. I so run so that I will obtain. He said, therefore, I so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 19, verse 20, the word so. Acts chapter 19, verse 20. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. 
so mightily. You know, it, it could have said, the word of God grew and prevailed. Or it could have said, the word of God grew mightily and prevailed. But it said, the word of God grew so mightily and prevailed. Which means, it went beyond the normal territory. The word so, as to rounding up the year. And you are saying, what will I do from now on for the rest of my life? It says, put some beam in your life. Some vitality in your life. Some seriousness in your life. Some dedication in your life. Some extra in your life. So that your light will so shine before men. And they will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. The word so. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. He could have said, let every one of you in particular love your wife. But he put the word so. He says, go the extra mile and so love your wife. Extra. Go beyond the ordinary. Go beyond the normal. Go beyond the moderate. Let everyone in particular so love his wife as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. In Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1. Wherefore seeing. We also are compassed 